Hi everyone, I am Chiara Labanti from the Nano Analysis Group at Imperial College London and I would like to introduce one of our latest works on organic photovoltaics. Together with collaborators from Imperial and Queen Mary University of London, we recently published a comprehensive review paper on non-fluorine acceptors and their progresses and challenges towards stable organic solar cells. Organic solar cells, based on a finely intermixed blend of donor and acceptor materials, the so-called bulk heterojunction, are reliable alternatives to traditional silicon photovoltaics, in particular for emerging applications such as building integrated, semi-transparent, lightweight and fully printable solar cells. In this context, non-fluorine acceptors commonly referred to as NFAs, are highly promising due to their extraordinary chemical flexibility, good absorption properties and synthetic ease, and they can provide a, a power conversion efficiency of 18% up to date, but further advancement is required to achieve long life in devices for commercial applications. In this article, we start from reviewing the main families of NFAs, namely based on ITIC, IDTBR and Y6 molecular structures. We illustrate the main chemical characteristics of each of them and the most relevant um, derivatives synthesized from uh, 2015 and the improvements in solar cell efficiency. Then we deal with the progress made in device engineering in terms of interlayers, ternary bulk heterojunction, tandem and integrated hybrid organic solar cells, and we also touch on the latest reports on printed large area photovoltaics. The core part of the review is, however, focused on the understanding of the degradation mechanisms of NFA solar cells and the requirements to overcome them. In particular, we cover the photooxidation processes from combined exposure to air and light, the light degradation in inert atmosphere involving, for example, NFA conjugation breaking and photocatalytic reaction in the interlayers, and the changes in morphology driven by temperature. Here we also illustrate the degradation mechanisms in low light conditions relevant to indoor applications. To improve the stability of NFA solar cells and meet the requirements for commercialization, different aspects of material synthesis and device fabrication can be optimized to reduce the impact of the various loss mechanisms. In particular, we analyze the desired features in terms of energetics, chemical structure and conformation of NFAs, of interfacial engineering in the solar cell stack and of the bulk junction morphology and different methods to control this. Here we also discuss the importance of the protocol to test the device lifetime. Since small lab-scale samples for early-stage research and large-area industrially produced solar cells often need to be assessed with completely different standards, which can affect the understanding of their stability. The final section of the review turns to the unsolved key challenges to address for NFA solar cell stability. There is still plenty of space for improvement and advancement in terms of NFA molecular design, for example exploring 3D geometries and removing weak sites from the chemical structure in terms of morphology, with the need for further understanding of the thermodynamic evolution of bulk junction in time, and in terms of devices, where more investigation will help to distinguish the multiple processes involved in degradation, such as radiative and non-radiative recombination and transport deterioration. We hope this review can be a helpful contribution to such a fast-growing field for green energy development. And please find it in the link below and do not hesitate to get in touch for further discussion and collaboration. Thank you.